hey everyone welcome back to my channel so today i'm going to start a new series which uh, involves metabolism and so for today's lesson i'm going to give an introduction to metabolism so metabolism basically refers to the um, sum of all chemical reaction which is taking place in the living organism so suppose here we have a chemical reaction this is a pathway of glycolysis and uh, don't don't really pay attention to the glycolysis pathway because we are definitely going to talk about that in, in subsequent videos but just to mention that in any of this chemical reaction in metabolism the product of one reaction that is uh, glucose 6 phosphate here serves as the substrate of the subsequent reaction so every time there is a reaction which generates product and that product is then uh, serving as a substrate for the uh, next reaction and not only that but there are different pathways uh, which also can you know, um, which also can intersect with one pathway in this case here glycolysis and then eventually it is forming an integrated network of chemical reaction so you can see here this is the glycolysis pathway and and there are many other pathways which are also intersected with this glycolysis pathway and therefore these are called as integrated purposeful uh, network of chemical reaction so here you can see that the the products which are generated from glycolysis reaction they are the uh, they they serve as a precursor uh, for another pathway in this case here pentose phosphate pathway triglyceride uh, triacylglycerol synthesis and degradation as well as urea cycle so likewise there are many pathways which are interconnected and form a, a big network of chemical reaction so in short all this collectively uh, called as metabolism which is nothing but just the sum of all chemical changes which is occurring in a cell or in a tissue or inside the body so now there are uh, metabolism serves two fundamentally different purposes first it generates energy to drive uh, all vital functions uh, in the living organism and second it also synthesizes biological molecules so metabolism consists of uh, two contrasting processes one is catabolic pathways and second is anabolic pathways now in catabolic pathways which involve the breaking down of complex molecules and and these complex molecules are energy each uh, energy rich molecule so while it is breaking down it is also releasing energy and therefore these pathways are catabolic pathways are also called as energy yielding pathways now uh, opposite to catabolic pathways anabolic pathways uh, are the pathways which synthesize complex molecules and and the precursor which are required to synthesize these complex molecules are provided uh, by catabolic pathways and we are going to see that later and and these molecules are energy consuming uh, and these pathways are energy consuming pathways therefore anabolic pathways are considered to be energy requiring pathways so now let's talk about catabol catabolic pathways so uh, catabolic pathways are basically a pathways which uh, responsible for degrading complex molecules uh, and these complex molecules the degradation of these complex molecules um, takes place in three different stages so in the first stage the complex molecules are hydrolyzed uh, into building blocks and these complex molecules are uh, proteins are either proteins carbohydrates such as polysaccharides or fats and and this these complex molecules are also uh, considered to be energy yield fuel molecules because it has a lots of energy uh, and when they are breaking it down uh, the energy is being released so uh, these pathways as i uh, as i mentioned here in the stage one they are broken down to yield building blocks so that means that the proteins are broken down into amino acids carbohydrates or the polysaccharides they are broken down into monosaccharides and fats uh, are broken down into glycerol and fatty acids so this is the first stage of forming the building blocks now second stage is uh, 
in in the second stage these building blocks are then f subsequently degraded into a common product uh, common product which is called acetyl coa so here you can see that all this um, building blocks either it is generated from proteins or carbohydrates or fats all these building blocks are then degraded into one common product that is called acetyl coa and um, the there are some energy which is released in the form of atp while these building blocks are converted into acetyl coa however the amount of energy which is released is very small compared to the energy which is produced during the third stage of catabolism so the third stage of catabolism is uh, oxidation of acetyl coa um, into water carbon dioxide and ammonia via a common pathway which is called tricarboxylic acid cycle so here you can see that um, the acetyl coa is then oxidized uh, into uh, oxidized uh, through a common pathway tricarboxylic acid cycle uh, to to form energy uh, energy rich compound uh, or to release energy that is in the form of ATP so this is ATP and uh, at the same time it also releases smaller or intermediary molecule these are called carbon dioxide water and ammonia and these are also uh, considered as uh, energy poor and products so in short uh, catabolism first it serves to capture chemical energy in the form of atp which is adenosine triphosphate uh, second it provides uh, building blocks which uh, which are needed for the synthesis of uh, complex molecules and third uh, these pathways are considered to be oxidative so these catabolic pathways are oxidative because uh, oxidation reaction what it does is it actually breaks down the covalent bonds and releases energy uh, and carbon dioxide and water so therefore catabolic pathways are uh, oxidative and third uh, catabolic pathways uh, the reaction in the catabolic pathways are exergonic um, meaning there is a net loss of energy so exerg the, uh, exergonic reactions um, a, they are called exergonic because the uh, complex molecules while the complex molecules are broken down um, into carbon dioxide and water uh, while doing that it is also releasing energy that means it, they are losing energy so therefore uh, these reactions are called exergonic where there is a net loss of energy and lastly uh, it also requires coenzyme uh, that is NAD plus so now let's talk about anabolic pathways so anabolic pathways uh, opposed to catabolic pathways these pathways actually combine small molecules to form complex molecules and these small molecules uh, are amino acids uh, which are then used to uh, synthesize proteins fatty acids to uh, lipids and monosaccharides to polysaccharides and and like i said that these uh, small molecules or building blocks such as amino acids fatty acids and monosaccharides these uh, building blocks are provided uh, through catabolic pathways now second we have uh, this anabolic reactions are energy consuming process uh, therefore these anabolic pathways are endergonic uh, uh, meaning there is a net gain of energy because um, these are called endergonic because they these pathways require uh, energy to synthesize complex molecule and these complex molecules are like i said that these complex molecules are energy rich uh, fuel molecules and therefore uh, there is a net gain of energy and second because it's an energy consuming process so energy is provided by breaking down atp into adp and uh, inorganic phosphate and these anabolic reactions also involve chemical reduction that means these pathways are reductive because uh, opposed to catabolic pathways uh, there is a there is a breakdown of covalent bond uh, therefore these pathways are considered to be uh, they, these are called uh, reductive pathways and lastly um, the there is also um, 
an important reducing power which is required uh, in reductive reaction which is called NADPH. So this is also NADPH is a very high energy electron donor, donor and that uh, and NADPH is, is crucial for um, synthesizing complex molecules. So now let's compare these two pathways. So first we have here complex molecules. These are proteins, carbohydrates, and lipids. And these are, these are called energy rich fuel molecules or they are also called as energy yielding nutrients because they are first broken down into building blocks and then those building, building blocks such as amino acids, uh, glucose or monosaccharides or glycerol or fatty acids. So those building blocks are then oxidized into carbon dioxide, water and ammonia and these uh, end products they are called energy poor end products. So while those building blocks are oxidized into uh, energy poor end products there is a free energy which is released in the form of ATP as well as there is reducing power which is also released and captured in the form of NADPH. And this uh, and in this pathway is called catabolic pathway or catabolism. And then remember that uh, catabolic pathways they are oxidative and these are exergonic reaction because there is a net loss of energy. As you can see here that these are energy rich uh, molecules which are broken down uh, into energy poor end products. Therefore, there is a there is a net loss of energy. Now, opposite to catabolism is so here we have anabolic pathway and as you can see here there is we have these precursor molecules those are amino acids sugar fatty acids and nitrogenous bases these precursor molecules are provided through uh, catabolism and they are uh, then converted into complex molecule such as uh, these are the complex molecules such as proteins polysaccharides lipids and nucleic acid and most importantly remember that anabolic and in this pathway is energy consuming process so um, free energy which is released through catabolism that is used to synthesize this complex molecule as well as uh, NADPH uh, is an excellent donor of high energy electrons which is also required for reductive uh, reaction of anabolism. So here you can see that this is the anabolic pathway which is a reductive reaction as well as endergonic um, uh, which is uh, where there is a gain of energy. You can see that, th that the precursor molecules are converted into complex molecules and now these complex molecules are um, energy rich fuel molecules and therefore there is a net gain of energy therefore anabolic reactions are endergonic whereas catabolic uh, reactions are exergonic so thanks so much for watching this uh, uh, video guys and if you like uh, please uh, if, if you learn something from this video please like and share the video and subscribe the channel and i will see you soon for my next lesson on glycolysis thanks so much